Good morning. We are here in Abernethy and behind me is the Castle or Hillfort and we're going to be doing another Hillfort tour today. So here we are at the foot of Castle Law. It's quite a steep hill fort. Is there anything about its shape that is noteworthy? Just the fact that you can you can see the summit up there. It's quite knobbly and all. So that's uh, typical of the dunes that you get in northern Scotland. I don't think that this path that we're about to go up would have been the way up the hill fort because it's far too steep. The original path was probably over on that side, over to the left. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we can see it from the top. Yes. Pretty steep, as I said. So we have found an information board, which you can read if you like. There's a, usually quite a good view. This is an image of how the hill fort would have looked like. So it says there might have been a witch's coven in the hillside cave. I wonder where that is. And also a Roman fort at Carpow. They found a ship there which is now in Perth Museum. If you ever come to Perth, go to the museum to look at it. So we are on our way up the hill fort just now. And you just said this ledge is the old wall. Um, the wall would have yeah, been on top of uh, this ridge here. Um, on top of that ridge? Yes. Um, you can see all of the stones here have uh, tumbled down centuries ago. And as you come up, there's one more wall right at the top there. So this is us just about to reach the summit of the hill. And as you can see, there's little stones all around the edge of the summit. And of course, that would have been the wall surrounding the, the, the summit. So that would have been the very top of the dune. So we're on top now, or close to the top, but I noticed these shapes here in the ground, which suggests that there have been things in this area. And there's a sneak peek of the view. There's a big hole just over here. What do you think a hole like this could suggest? Ooh, I don't know. Um, could be a well, originally. Maybe mm -hmm. that was the well for the hill fort. Hill fort. A lot of hill forts have wells uh, on the summit. It would have provided water for the people living at the top. I mean, if hill forts were sacred sites and if they had wells at the top, then that would definitely uh, be a good source of uh, water for connection with the other world mm. and so forth. So if they wanted to perform rituals and uh, things like that, that would be useful. But, you know, it could also have had a more practical uh, use, which would have been if uh, people were holed up in the hill fort, they would have had a source of water without having to you know, leave the hill fort to go down to the, the, the river. Okay. Let's go up to the top now. There's a pile of stones. And there's more shapes. So do you think all these lines suggest some kind of housing? Uh, I'll be honest, this is quite unusual uh, just to have Hill, the tops of hill forts are not usually this um, indented, so... Well, do you think it's to do with the excavations that they've done here then? Possibly. Well, yeah. have they done excavations here? Um, I think they might have, yeah. Because they reconstructed the appearance of it. So what's interesting, in the distance there, you can see one of the paths of Fife, probably East Lomond, which is also a hill fort. So usually uh, one hill fort would be in the site of another hill fort. And here's a pan of the area. You get a great view, obviously. There's hill forts over on these hills as well. And then in that direction, you have Dundee, which also had a hill fort. 
There's another candidate for being a well. Yeah, it actually has water in it. <laughs> but again, it's, it's hard to tell if this is uh, a result of excavation that's since just filled in with water or whether, you know, this actually would have been a well in the past. So here we have the village of Abernethy. Aber is a Brythonic word and means mouth. So this village name probably means mouth of the river Nethi. And I think river Nethi is a small burn that we came past, so you will see it later on. And on our way back, we're gonna stop by the round tower of Abernethy, which is an important medieval tower and you'll get to see a little bit of that as well. So as you come closer to the edge there you can see more wall. So there really is a wall surrounding probably the whole of the hillfort top. Here's a round shape, a curve leading around so um, might have been the remains of a building that were excavated. So here's one contender for the way up. There's a gentle slope going all along the wall and up to the top. So here's how it continues. So there's still that gentle slope. So it's possible that you would have come in from this way. There's also a wall here, probably just built by sheep farmers. And a bit of a ditch. So here you see the full extent of the ditch going all the way over there. So do you think that would have been some kind of gate that people had to pass through? Could have been. Let's go over there and have a look. Okay. So there's obviously a bunch of gorse obscuring the way, but I think this is a very likely contender of the way in. And there's a defensive ditch here. And then the top up there with the main building. And probably a wall all around it as well. So this, in fact, does look like the remains of a wall. And there's some stones remaining over there. And then I see at the top. Abernethy is said to have been founded by the Pictish King Nechton, son of Gwerp, who offered ownership of the land to St. Bridget, an Irish saint who shares her name with the Celtic goddess of spring, Bridget. The festival of Imbolc on the 1st of February is Bridget's Day. The first excavations took place here from 1896 to 1898 and were done by Victorian antiquarians. They found stone, bone and bronze objects, most likely dating from the Neolithic and the Iron Age. They also found the stone walls to be laced with timber. This means that wooden beams were inserted horizontally to stabilise the walls. And this is exactly the same technique described by Julius Caesar as being used by the Gauls. More recent excavations took place in 2017 and revealed a few more objects, such as a quern and the crucible. They also created the visual reconstructions you saw on the panel earlier. I discovered from the top, there's also this interesting path that leads down towards the wall. So I wonder if it's a later addition done by excavation, so whether that would have been a side entrance of sorts. Half along the wall, here's the wall, it's a big wall. There's a lot of stone still left over. That's the hill fort from the other side. That's where we were earlier, where all that gorse is. Still remains of the wall. And Path leading over to the other wood. Just coming up from that direction below. The 
you see the movement. I think there's insects living in these larvae. So we've got this very flat plain down by the foot of the hill fort. It's now a bog, but it might not have been a bog back in the day. That's the hill fort right on the top there. And I wonder if there would have been some houses. On the other side there you can see something that looks like a rampart. So it may have been part of the protected area. This is on the other hill opposite the hill fort. It's a beautiful forest here, very calm. That sounds ominous. The <laughs> Witch's Road. That's the stream I was talking about earlier, which might be the Nephi. That's the Hillford up there. It is very spring like, by the way. The sun is quite warm. That's nice. So here's a random standing stone as well, just by the side of the path. It's rather large. Actually, not that large, but medium. It's quite wide. Yeah. Cherry is already in bloom. So this is the old marketplace of the Market Cross. And the round tower is right next to it. This is the round tower of Abernethy. There's only two of these in Scotland, the other is in Brechin and Angus. Built in the same sort of style as uh, round towers that you get in Ireland, which were supposedly places of refuge for monks fleeing from Vikings. And next to it you have a uh, Pictish stone. And there's a little chain where basically your neck goes in there and you are publicly shamed. That's what it's for. Because we did a tour um, once on the doors open day and we got to go up to the top of the tower. Um, you don't have to wait for the open tour though because you can just go into the local museum and get the key. So that's the entrance there. So this tower used to be much higher than that. Uh, and there would have been a ladder leading up to the door and this ladder was pulled whenever um, for example Vikings would attack and the people were considered safe inside of this tower which is also quite thick inside I think the wall is um, between half a meter and one meter thick and here's a plaque uh, commemorating some of the facts and there was a treaty made here between Malcolm Canmore and William the Conqueror, the Treaty of Abernethy, in the year 1072. Here's the Pictor Stone again. 
It's hard to say what these things, some of these things mean. This is clearly a hammer. This might be a pair of scissors. And this might be an axe head. And the museum, unfortunately, it is closed. It's open from May to September, but it is right beside the tower, so it's not far. Malcolm Canmore, who signed the Treaty of Abernethy here, was the son of Duncan I. He was killed by no other than Macbeth in a battle in 1040. Malcolm had to flee to England, and 15 years later he returned and defeated Macbeth, and he became king, Malcolm III of Scotland. Malcolm would invade Northern England numerous times, and thus he attracted the wrath of William I, also known as William the Conqueror, King of England. William marched to Scotland with a big army in 1072. He defeated Malcolm's forces in the battle near Abernethy and forced him to sign the treaty in which Malcolm acknowledged William as the overlord. 